Hey, what's up, guys? Nick right here. I do tech Cody stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Chat description for all my information. We're doing all the leak code. We're doing all the hack rank. We're doing all the algorithm problems we can find, but there's thousands of them, so, you know, it's probably going to take forever. Okay. Uh, this one's called Jump Game. I'm doing all the ones that I somehow missed that are super popular. I uh, can't believe I missed this one. Number 55, Jump Game. A lot of likes. Given an array of non-negative integers, uh, so no negatives in this array, you're initially positioned at the first index of the array. All right. So we're given an array and we're at the first index. Each element of the array represents the maximum jump length at that position. Okay, so let's look at this example. So if we start at the first index, they're saying the value at that index, so in this case two, is how far we can jump from this first index. So if the value is two, we can jump up to two spaces. It's the maximum jump length. So we can jump one, or we could jump two. So we could jump from two to three, or we could jump from two to one. And if we were at this index, like three, we can jump, you know, to here, we could jump two spaces, or we could jump three spaces. That's the maximum jump length, so you could jump up to that value uh, spaces. Okay. Determine if you're able to reach the last index. Okay, so it's actually a pretty straightforward problem, like very basic problem description. I really like it. Uh, you're starting at the first index, and we want to know if we can reach the last index from the first index. We're starting at the first one, trying to get to the last one, and we can use that each value has the maximum spaces you can jump from that particular spot, right? So can we reach the end of this? Let's look at the test case, right? So if we have two at the beginning, we can either jump one or two. Okay, so let's just jump two just for fun, right? One, two. Okay, and then we're at one, we can jump one, okay. And then we're at one, and then we jump one, and then we have four, yeah, we're good. So as soon as you get to the last index, you're fine. Um, so yeah, this is perfect. You could jump any other way. If we jump the other way, let's say we just jump one, then we jump three, yeah, we're fine. You could Any way you do it is pretty much good on this one. Okay, let's look at this one, see if we can get to the end from here. Okay, so let's, we have three, let's jump three. One, two, three, and then we have zero, so obviously we can't do anything. Uh, let's jump one, and then one, two, nope, can't do anything. Okay, let's jump one, two, nope, can't do anything. Okay, so you're screwed on this one. This one's bad. So how do we figure this out, right? How do we solve this? If we were just looping, every, everyone thinks, like initially, you see an array, and you're like, okay, loop through the array, loop through the array, right? Um, so if we started at the beginning, and we were looping through the array, you know, how do we determine if it's possible to jump to the end from the first index? How do we How do we know? And especially, how do we know which decision to make, right? If we have two or three or four or whatever values in there, how do we know whether to jump four spaces? How do we know whether to jump two spaces? Uh, when you're in a predicament like this, it usually comes up uh, dynamic programming or backtracking or something like this. So backtracking and dynamic programming have similarities, right? So backtracking is basically you have these decisions you can make, right? Like you have this maximum jump length, like two at the beginning. What do I jump, one or two spaces, if I have two jump spaces? Um, well, backtracking involves making all of the possible decisions, right? So in backtracking, we would just jump one and two, and then we'd, in three, we would jump one and then two and then three. We do all these recursive calls, jumping every possible amount of times. And uh, in the end, we would just pick the optimal route uh, out of all of those recursive calls. We would just end up finding the answer, but the the bad part about backtracking is they're slow, right? The time complexity of backtracking solutions is two to the n. Um, so I'm just gonna go over, you know, there's a bunch of ways to do this and you can look at the solution and you know, there's all these ways to do this, but the best way to do this is actually a linear solution. And it's pretty intuitive if you think about it, it's just kind of clever. So let's just think about this. Here, I'll explain it right here. So here's the, here's the optimal solution. It's linear time, constant space, very linear. It's a greedy approach, right? So um and you could do this backwards or forward think about going backwards think about starting backwards so if you actually were at the last index what if we were to go backwards and we were just to keep track of what spot you can get to the last index from so if we started traversing backwards we're at four right so that's good we're let, let's say we're good at this spot we've already reached the end so that's true that means we can get to the end from here okay let's just start expanding our array from here okay let's go to one can we get to the end from one Yes, so this is also good, so we're good to hear. So now what we're gonna wanna keep track of is anything that can get to this one, okay? So now we go to the next one. We're just going backwards. Can we get to this one? Because we know from here we can get to here, and that's good. Yes, we can get to here, okay? So we're good on this spot. Can we get to here? Because if we get to here, then we can go to just here, and then we can go to here. 
three, three can go to this one. Okay, so three can go to this one, then this one can go to this one, then this can go to this one. Can we get to three? Two, yes, can get to three. So then you go this, 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 this. So basically what you're going to want to do is just keep track of while you go backwards the last spot that you've seen where you can get the last good index position to where you can get to the ending position. And then you want to make sure that as you traverse, the next element can get to that good index position. And that's it. That's the whole approach. It's pretty simple when you think about it. We can go through an example at the end. So we're just going to say last good index position make a very clear variable name so the last good index position is going to be the last element at first because obviously you've reached the end of the array at that position so that's a good position then we're going to be traversing backwards nums.length minus one i greater than or equal to zero i uh, minus minus this is just a basic backwards traversal through an array and what you're going to want to do is this is the condition so if nums of i plus we'll do this if the current position you're at plus nums of i is greater than or equal to last good index position then last good index position equals i so and then um you just return if last good index position equals zero so we'll do this one more time on the same array just go through it with the code walkthrough as well so right what like just what i explained the last good index position so here's the last good index position we will set this to here the array's length is zero one it's one two three four five right and the index of the last one would be four right so the last last good index position is equal to four at this point right and uh that's because it's the last element in the array so if we're there that means we're good right we've reached the end of the array now let's go backwards right so we start going backwards we start at the last element and we're good so we get, we're we're at this element now okay so this element is three this index is three so it's three plus the value because this is the index this is the jump uh value so it's three plus one greater than or equal to four meaning this index so as the index you're at is the index for this three plus the value how space how many space we jump good enough to get to the last good index position was just four yes it is so we reassign it to three okay now you go backwards here is the zero one two two index is two plus one good enough to get to three because from three we can get to the end of the array yes it is so we reassign it to two okay is zero one plus three which is four greater than or equal enough to get to this index right here uh the second position because from there we can go to the end right and we already kind of went over this so you know you guys get the point i walked through all the code it's a very basic solution it just kind of shows you that sometimes maybe don't think about just like i i know it's really like habitual and like um you know sorry it's uh boolean at the end because you want to make sure that uh the last good index position has to get to zero because that's the first element in the array. So obviously you have to get from the first element to the last element. Um, you get into this habit of just thinking when you see an array, like how do I do this from looping in the forward direction? Like how do I do it? You know, what do I do? What do I do? But um, you do have to have, you know, you, you have to just think about things abstractly sometimes. Think about going backwards. Think about, you know, this is uh, just a good question, like thinking about going from the other end of the array because you know that's the destination. So it's kind of like a top-down kind of uh, system. You can actually do it going forward with a similar approach, and you can look at that. There's there's so many solutions for this. This is the same solution that I just wrote out in uh, going forward. This is a greedy algorithm doing the same thing going forward. So you can look at that. Also, they have very detailed solutions uh, as far as how they got to the greedy algorithm and the backtracking solution backtracking is just every possible decision it's very slow when you and we don't want to do that in this case then you could use dynamic programming and memoization on top of that and then there's the bottom up and then there's greedy so uh, look through that if you're interested but uh, this is just I, I'm sure you guys understand because it's really not that hard it's kind of like once you get it you get it and uh, I did this a long time ago on like uh, some Coursera course. So I actually knew how to do it uh, when I first got to the question from that. So just knowing how to do it and seeing problems like this will help you out in the future. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Please like and subscribe to help me uh, grow my channel. And uh, comment below problems you want me to do in the next one. All right. See you guys in the next video. All right. See you. Bye.